Everyone, welcome back to Young and Wifed Up. This is Marcella. And I'm Gabby. And thanks for joining us this week for another episode. Before we get into today's topic, I want to quickly talk to you guys about Covenant Eyes. Covenant Eyes is an online accountability software that you download on your cell phones, iPads, and computers so that you can have accountability and screen monitoring for all of your web and app activity. This is great if you have kids that have mobile devices and for an extra layer of accountability for you or for your husband's devices as well. So we have a one month free um, link in our website, youngandwifedup.com. So you can try it out and download it on all of your devices and see if it works for your family. We love it and we stand by it and we hope that you enjoy it too. So before we get into our topic again we just want to address <laughs> oh, we forgot to address something the onion in, in the our room. first episode the onion <laughs> if you're watching on youtube <laughs> there's currently half of an onion sitting i'll give it a um, place of honor i'll put it to the in front in between gabby and i on our nice little table here it's um in honor of cold and flu season that is yes. just if killing you, everybody yeah. right now. <laughs> if you listen to our Patreon exclusive cold and flu hack episode, then you already know why there is an what onion What the deal in here. is with this. Um, Ryan has a cold and I'm trying to not get it. And I also am trying to help him kick it. So there is a half an onion in almost every room of our house right now. So this is a Fun. big one. This is a big onion. Yeah. That he cut. It's it doesn't kind of even giant. barely fits in your little bowl there. But I don't know, guys. I think it works because... Twice when Ryan has had a cold and we've done the onion trick, I didn't get it. Hmm. So we'll see. And the one time I got sick was when you didn't do the onion? Yes. And then I I had the flu. That's crazy. I'm not superstitious, but I don't know. You're just a little stitious. Just a little onion stitious. (laughs) Marcella, what are you going to talk to us about today? I'm going to tell you guys about... What on earth do me and my boys do on a daily basis? Our daily routine. Toddler routine. Toddler routine. Yes, I have two toddler boys. <laughs> it's fun. They're fun. They're fun kiddos. Okay. So first things first, I'm just going to get right into it. I'm yeah. wasting no time. Well, Also, I think it might be helpful to oh, oh, oh. note that um, you don't do like preschool. I do not do preschool. No. So, so some people are like, so then what are you doing with them? Um, you know? Okay, so start. <laughs> okay, so my oldest is three and my youngest is one. So that kind of gives you an idea of the difference in ages, why I kind of do things a little bit differently with both of them. But for the most part, like general activities are the same. So I get Eli up first, which is my, who's my one-year-old. I get him up. I am still breastfeeding him. I only do one session with him a day and he usually doesn't want anything more than that anyway. And I think I'm I think pretty soon that's going to be falling off as well. That's going to be eliminated, but we'll see. Um, So I feed him in the morning and I usually just bring him in bed with me and both the boys sleep together in the same room. They sleep 12 hours a night every night praise god (laughs) yes praise god (laughs) if you're wondering how i got them to do that um i put both of the boys through the taking care of babies um sleep training program and she has like a newborn thing and then like a three to four month thing and then you, because you really should not, it's not safe to sleep train a newborn. Oh, no. Please don't do that. <laughs> or like really three to four months is also not a good time to do that. But usually she says like five and a half, six mm-hmm. months old is usually when people do sleep training. So um, thankfully, Jed and I have our, have had our bedroom back for a while now, which is really great because usually with new babies, we bring them in. Newborns sleep with us, with the parents for a while, and then they kind of transition into the kids' room. So, 
They both sleep 12 hours at night together in the same room. Somehow, if one of them wakes up, the other one does not wake up. I don't know how that's possible. (laughs) It's like a bomb could go off and the other (laughs) child would not wake up. (laughs) They're just really hard sleepers. So bring Eli in at like seven o'clock in the morning and then I'll feed him and we just hang out or whatever. And then I'll usually wake Seth up, who's my three-year-old, around eight o'clock. And then... Usually our morning routine is like I get the boys changed. I sit Seth on the potty because he's potty trained. So he goes. He's not night trained yet, but usually like he like maybe went like once or something during the night. So he has the um, pull ups like the nighttime pull ups. So we get clean him all changed. I get Eli changed. And then we clean up. So Seth has chores in the morning. He has to put all of his stuffed animals on the bed. And then I fix his blankies for him because he's just, he just doesn't have the coordination for that yet. (laughs) So I do that. And then I get like stuff set up for like Eli's nap. That way that's ready to go when the time comes. I like make our own bed. Um, I do not wake up before the kids. I know a lot of moms do that, but that's just maybe sometime in the future that will be my thing. But at this point, it is not. Um, so we kind of get our stuff cleaned up and our rooms kind of tidied up for the day. And then typically I'll start a load of laundry and Seth will help me with like getting the clothes way across the other side of the house, which is where the laundry room is. And then we will eat breakfast around like 8 30, 9 o'clock. And then recently I've been doing, I've been trying to do walks with them for like 20 minutes or so after breakfast. So we have breakfast and I'll do typically I'll do like scrambled eggs and like bananas and a bunch of fruit and like toast and butter and stuff like that. And then we'll clean up. Seth has to like take care of his dishes and stuff. So he brings them to the sink and rinses them off. And then I get Eli cleaned up. We go on our walk for about 20 minutes or so. And then once we come back is usually... By the time I get everybody loaded up into the stroller and we're going on our walks and stuff and then coming back and like unloading everything and all that stuff just like takes a long time. Usually it's like 10 o'clock, which is when Eli goes down for his morning nap. So Eli will sleep from 10 to 11. And during that time, Seth will either go outside in the backyard because we have a fenced yard, which is really nice. So I can let him run out there and I... I don't go out there most of the time. I'm usually in the kitchen, um, which is where the backyard, there's like a door from the dining room Mm -hmm. that goes to the backyard. So I'll leave it cracked open so I can still hear him. And he is really good about staying in certain areas. He knows he's not supposed to go uh, past certain points in our yard because he knows like if he doesn't see the door, that means I can't see him and then he gets in trouble. So he is really good about that. And then he gets his outdoor time doing that. And during that time, I'll put like one ear in for like an audiobook or a podcast and I'll like wash the dishes up from breakfast, do other kitchen necessities that I have to. And then um, it's either that or if he wants to stay inside, which is not very often, but if he does, we'll do some reading and then he'll just like find his own stuff to do and play inside until Eli gets up. So then recently Seth has been very adamant about waking Eli up from naps and he gets really upset if I don't let him wake (laughs) Eli up. He has to be the one to open the door and turn the light on and turn the sound machines off. So (laughs) otherwise he cries (laughs) if I go and do it before him. (laughs) Just three-year-old things. So 11 o'clock we get Eli up. Usually we do like a really small snack and then from like 11 to 12-ish is kind of like free time. Sometimes if I wasn't able to do a walk with them earlier before Eli's nap afterwards, we'll either do a walk then or I like tried to take them to the park um, before we have to come back home, like to have lunch and stuff. So we'll do our little snack. You know, maybe we'll play inside for a little bit. If I have more stuff that I need to do around the house, I usually get it done during that time. And then um, what's really nice about having the both of them so close in age is that they are playing really well together now. And so they just keep 
each other company. (laughs) And that was a lot more difficult when Seth was Eli's age because it was just me and him. And so I was like his playmate. (laughs) So if he wanted human interaction, it was like, mom, come on. And so now it's like him, Seth and Eli can interact with each other and they like have a lot of fun and stuff. So um, I'm trying to think. Usually lunch will happen around 12, 1230. And then depending on the day, sometimes if we're ever going out in the day, it's usually after lunchtime. It's usually after lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes if we need to like if we need to be somewhere, we'll push lunch a little bit earlier. It depends. Sometimes we have like a Bible study group that we need to go to or if I want to take the boys to the gym with me because I have I'm going to a gym right now where they have like childcare and stuff. So Sometimes I'll try to fit it in there because you have to like go before 12 o'clock. That's like when the childcare hours are done. So sometimes we'll go right after Eli wakes up, like throw them in the car and like go to Bible study group or like go to the gym. Or if we have to run errands and stuff, it's always like feed them a snack and then leave. Mm -hmm. And then we're like back home usually in time for for lunch. So then we do lunchtime. Same situation for like mealtime. Seth takes care of his dishes afterwards. And then... Seth goes down for his one nap of the day. And yes, he does actually sleep. Sometimes he will only sleep for like 30 minutes. Other times he will sleep for like two hours straight. It just depends on like how he's feeling, how tired he is or like what he was doing that day. Usually I will put him down around 1.30 and then I don't get him up until like 3.45, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um... And even if he's not asleep, his door is closed and the lights are off. The sound machine is on so that if he wants to go to sleep, it's all ready for him. But sometimes he just like plays with his little stuffed animals in his bed. He's He's like singing and talking to himself for like an hour. (laughs) So cute. (laughs) But as long as he's not like wandering around the room, getting a bunch of noisy toys out and like he can be awake. Like I don't mind if he's awake. He Mm -hmm. just has to be quiet in his room, Mm -hmm. Um, which is really helpful for me. Um, and then Eli will go down for his second and final nap of the day at about 2.15 ish. And then he will sleep until about 4.15. I usually get him up then. So usually I'll get Seth up first from his nap and like get him all, you know, cleaned up and, you know, sit him on the potty and get him all figured out. And then we'll go and get Eli up. And then they have a snack again. And then around that time, usually within 20 or 30 minutes of them waking up, Jed will get home. So then they're just playing with dad pretty much for the rest of the the rest of the evening. Or because we are subleasing from my parents, they're playing with my parents because they're usually both home around that time. So and then I start on dinner and they usually keep themselves pretty occupied. And then we usually have dinner around six o'clock. We all eat together. They all... Uh, since the beginning, always eat the same food that we do. I don't make anything special for them. I don't do, I have never done baby food or anything like that. Like even when they first started solids, it was just like, they're going to eat the same thing as us. It's just going to be like safe for them to eat, like nothing too big and all of that. So um, we do dinner at that time. And then usually we'll do family worship with the four of us. Um, after we have dinner and kind of like halfway cleaned up, like just gotten our dishes to the sink and kind of wiped down the table and like the floors and and all that stuff. And then we will get the boys ready for bed around like, I would say like 730. So usually then it's just like lots of free playtime. So they're usually running around the living room, chucking balls at each other and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> getting their energy out however they want it's just yeah just being crazy um then we'll do more reading and like i said family worship and all that so that's all kind of like mushed in there and then they're usually in bed by seven forty-five, usually at the latest and that also varies because like on sundays we're out later because mm-hmm. we're doing sabbath dinners so usually their their bedtime is pushed later and eli has a completely different schedule on sundays we only do one nap a day on Sundays, and that's usually that takes place after church when we get home in the afternoon. So he takes a really long nap, one really long nap in the afternoon. So then they have a little bit of a later bedtime. Um, so yeah, and they both go down at the same time at about 
745, and then they're out for the rest of the night. Thank you, Marcella, for sharing. That's all, folks. (sighs) Thank you for sharing that with us. (laughs) Yeah. Honestly, it's really interesting to me. (laughs) Well, also, I think, like, some people have misconceptions of, like, what do you do all day when you have little kids? Yeah. And you're not doing schoolwork. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like interesting. Like, it sounds like you literally still have a full day, even if you don't even have anything particularly planned to go out or have company or anything. Yeah. Because even just like preparing and feeding the kids three square meals a day, <laughs> yeah. that alone and like the cleanup and like the prep and like all of that stuff. And you have to think of all of the little things that like in between. You know, somebody's having a meltdown, and so that's going to take, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to kind of, like, (laughs) like, avert the crisis that's going on over on this side of the house, and then, so, and then, yeah. So, it's, like, man, like, you know, just because they're not doing schoolwork, or, like, because I'm not working, and it's, like, well, it's, there's just so, once you're in it, you're, like, (laughs) like, I have no time to do anything (laughs) at all. Like, how, I did it. I did, like, so much and absolutely nothing at the same time. Like, <laughs> there are days that feel like that. It's like, all I did was go to the bathroom Feed and people. eat. <laughs> and somehow I had no time to yeah. even sit down for, like, a few minutes. Like, how does that work? It's very interesting with little children how, mm-hmm. how that happens. But, yeah, it's good. So, like, our, our, our version of, like, preschool, I guess, is much different because we're like trying to adopt more charlotte mason yeah outside and reading outdoor time reading those are the priorities yes um so it sounds like you're doing a lot of that yes there's a lot of that and i'm sure the days that you can't go outside the days feel a lot longer (laughs) yeah and i i i bet they feel a lot longer for seth too he (laughs) loves loves being outside he loves it all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed Marcella's routine with toddlers. <laughs> with and toddlers. I don't know. What do you guys do with your toddlers or your little ones? Let us know yeah. in the comments. All right. Thank you guys for joining us this week. We will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.